welcome and thank you so much for coming to see this new and original play by the post-pandemic performance project all proceeds raised from this production will benefit our chosen charity or local cause everyone involved has volunteered their time and resources to this project the director would like to thank both them and yourselves for making this show possible for more information about the play and the project please see the slip on your seat which has a link to the e-programme kindly familiarize yourself with a fire exit and please wear a face covering where possible for now please turn your phones off or on silent and refrain from taking any photographs most importantly sit back relax and enjoy the show edward bulwer lytton wrote the pen is mightier than the sword. His words, now a proverb, are quoted by many, and quite rightly so. Words are a power for both good and bad, a weapon and a remedy alike. They give us all the superpower, the power to converse, and the best, the power to tell stories. One such story you are about to see. The discourse, the setting, the circumstances, all shall be dictated by one magical book, so named The Vault Volumes. You will bear witness to the monumental power of words and how they are wielded in the hand of the beholder. beat the smell of a good old book. There's something comforting about it. And a bookshop too. It's like walking into a silent saloon to greet old and some new awaiting friends. I couldn't agree more. But unfortunately the internet is much more convenient for people these days. I bet you in 10 years time you'll be able to smell the sweet, indulgent, woody bibliosima at the touch of a button. Bibliosmia? Bibliosmia, the smell produced by a book. Equally, I bet there'll be an app which you can scan your kitchen cupboards for it to then recommend uh, a recipe. Human intelligence, I fear, is a dying breed. You're not a fan of technology then? Well, I suppose that's a silly question. On the contrary, I adore it. But it's a poison chalice. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Fool's gold. But I'm a drinker. I'm a sheep. And I'm a fool for it. Guess I've had a wasted journey then. I had anticipated a good ponder, a running of the finger across the spines of old collections. I've reached the end of the rainbow, but alas, the gold has diminished. Don't give up hope just yet. I've still books to sell. I'll tell you what, if you help me with my indexing, I'll see what I can do. At least a discount, maybe a freebie. Um, there you are. Have that index, if you will. I'd be delighted to help. 
the books are listed by author's last name, uh, then by title, you'll see I've marked pack books with a little tip. You'll want to cross-reference your list with mine later on. Isn't that making more work for yourself? Correct. Um, so perhaps you'll use this pen. The red mark will make life easier for me later. Of course. I suppose I should introduce myself. I'm Mel. I'm glad you stopped by today, Mel. Albeit the shop isn't quite what you had expected in its current state. I should introduce myself too. I'm... Jasper, presumably. Jasper's Emporium of Remarkable and Underrated Books. Quite. It. It's lovely to meet you, Jasper. If I may, what will happen to these books? Well, I suppose if I stored them, I, uh, I could sell them to a museum in a, in a couple of decades. I'm joking, of course. Um, I did manage to sell quite a lot of them recently. The rest here, well, I'll auction them off online. And uh, premises? I own them. However, I should like to move on soon. Guess we have a lot of work to do then. so much as looked at the cover, I suppose I wrote them more for myself. Uh, still, it's sad to think of the characters and the worlds I've invented, just being locked away and undiscovered. I haven't the time or energy uh, to promote them, and honestly, I don't think I could pay people to, to read them. I'd like to read it. You really wouldn't. It's full of mistakes. Besides, I'm not thick-skinned enough to bear the critiques of where the storylines contradict or where I've wrongly used the Oxford comma. You're a storyteller, so what if the story contradicts? Can anyone perfectly recall every moment of their own experience without even a small contradiction? So what if you've made some grammatical errors? It's a story that matters. If I may, I'd like to put one aside so I may borrow it later. Do as you wish, but don't say I didn't warn you. You're quite the pessimist, Jasper. that I've ever seen it before. It's not the first time that people 
I donated books. I presume it's worthless. If you don't mind though, I'll uh, go and do some research on it in my office. Feel free to read it in the meantime. Thank you. Can I get you a drink or a sandwich? Uh, I brought a sandwich and a drink with me, but thank you all the same. Well, if you change your mind, just let me know. How do you know I'm not going to run off with the book? Well, I don't. Could be worthless. Uh, I promised you at least one book for helping me today, and one cannot miss what one hasn't had a chance to become attached to. In the short time, since I've known you, you don't strike me as someone um, who would just run off. Anyway, if I'm wrong, then shame on me. You have nothing to worry about, Jasper. I was simply intrigued by your trust in me. I found it, in a way, tastefully old-fashioned. Quite. Jasper. The inn with the hidden window. A long time ago, in a faraway land, there were two large hills, three miles apart. Atop one hill was a castle, and atop the parallel hill was an inn. The inn was calm most of the time. It served travellers as a pit stop on the way to the castle. On this particular stormy night, one such traveller retired at the inn. Once settled by the fire, the traveller took in his surroundings, realising it was just himself and the innkeeper occupying the place. Why then are there no windows in this inn? he asked. Windows let the cold in, the innkeeper replied. Do you not get lonely without a view to look upon? the traveller inquired. No need, there's usually a traveller like your son with a story to share, came the reply. You must have heard many stories. I'd like to hear them, the traveller invited hopefully. Very well, but first tell me what brings you to this part of the kingdom. On saying this, the innkeeper sat beside the traveller at the fireside. I have travelled the land from the south to the north, hoping to find a place to call home. You see, I have rested at many beautiful places, but none have quite felt belonging. I am sure that I have a purpose in this life, though I am yet to discover it. I think you are the first traveller who has crossed the threshold of my inn with no fixed purpose. I would like to show you something. Come with me, if you will. At that, the innkeeper led the traveller through a creaky door, followed by a short descent down an uneven stone spiral staircase, with only the flickering light of the small torch in the innkeeper's hand. Do you know why, in a castle, the steps are uneven, or why the staircase is clockwise? the innkeeper tested. I do not, admitted the traveller. The world is built by pessimists. The threat of conflict rules them. But the practical answer is, most sword wielders are right-handed. Therefore, on defending the castle, descending the staircase, they are at a better advantage to swing their sword. The steps are uneven to make it more difficult for an unfamiliar visitor to negotiate them, the innkeeper clarified. I see, but why is this the case in your inn? The traveller wondered. When we stepped through that door back there, we were technically no longer in that inn. 
the innkeeper claimed cryptically. What are you talking about, man? The traveller queried in a hurried confusion. We must lower our voices, the innkeeper instructed, turning back to the traveller. But why, whispered the traveller. We are in the crypt of the castle, was the reply. How is that even possible? I mean, are you mad? You'll get us both killed. The traveller could feel his heart racing. I am the only one who has access to this crypt. Possibly the only one who knows, know, knows it exists. Its entrance to it from the castle is hidden in a mausoleum within the chapel. The innkeeper's claim seemed preposterous, but the traveller heard genuineness in his tone and saw it in his face. He watched as a huge space lit up a flaming torch at a time from the innkeeper's own. It's okay, you can come out now, the innkeeper called. Confused even more each passing second, the traveller waited expectantly to see who or what the innkeeper was addressing. Out of the shadows, an unusual creature waddled. It was beautiful, but unlike anything he had ever seen. Its body was like that of a dog walking on hind legs, but its ears were elf-like and its fur was ever-changing like a glittering rainbow. Its eyes were small and black and its arms were unusually long. The traveller was mesmerised by the being. This is Hope, the innkeeper introduced. Hope, an unusual name, remarked the traveller. I was told it was not just a name, but a word, the innkeeper explained. What does it mean, the traveller asked, still bewildered by the creature, which was as curious about him as he was of it. It means believing in something good, even in the darkest days, the innkeeper told. Why is Hope hidden here, came the traveller's response. It's not hidden, it just prefers to stay down here. You see, no one can see it, and so it hides away. I was like you once, a traveller looking for a purpose. I came upon this inn, and my predecessor told me what I have told you. Your purpose is here. You must help people to see hope. Sadly, I have not succeeded, but hope has been a companion of mine. Hope has shown me a window of promise and the view from this such window has given me the strength to believe that better days are on the horizon. At that, the creature, Hope, waddled forwards, taking the traveller's hand. It led the traveller to a wall, and on that wall it drew an arch with its finger. Within the arch, traced on the stone, visible a window. The window showed the traveller a wholesome land between the castle and the inn. There were fruitful harvests, children playing, joyful laughter of adults, smiles and blue skies. Most importantly, not a single sign of poverty, war, illness or any other of the curses the kingdom had faced. How is this even possible? the traveller asked. Anything is possible, if you believe enough. The innkeeper took off his apron, handing it over to the traveller. He knelt down to hope and said, I must move on now, but I will spread your name in every place I encounter. Thank you, my friend. The innkeeper hugged the creature Hope, and as he did, the most beautiful smile stretched across Hope's face, and it shone just a little brighter. When he stood, the innkeeper shook the traveller's hand. I believe in you, he said, and at that he turned away, walked up the clockwise staircase, and through the door, never to be seen again. The traveller, now the new innkeeper, looked to Hope. Teach me, he asked. Teach me how to allow people to see you. And Hope did. Hope showed him stories in the window, stories which the new innkeeper told others. And the more he did, the more people saw Hope and how beautiful it was. Even on the darkest days, Hope's smile gave people the will to carry on until eventually the kingdom was the happiest in all the land. good even in the darkest days. Anything is possible if you believe enough. Any luck? 
It's worthless. I wouldn't say that. Oh? Value is not simply the financial worth of something. These books, these words, sentences, stories. So many individuals have slaved hours away writing for. They're captured on these very physical pieces of paper. Paper that trees have died for, so that we may learn and grow. I would say, Jasper, that they're priceless, in fact. No matter how incredible technology is, it's missing the physical comfort a book can provide. We can't let them die. I believe in books, and I believe that we can show others that bookshops like these are a treasure trove, full of works that make up fragments of history, the surviving thoughts and words of authors who have long since died. That book there must have been good, but you're wrong, Mel. People are too stuck in their ways. That won't change. Jasper, why are you giving up so easily? Have some hope. I did have hope. Every day for the last two years, I hoped that someone would walk through these doors just once to tickle the spines of these books. The only thing they touched on these shelves was dust. No one cares about old books anymore. I do. I care, Jasper. I came through your door today. Well, I wish you hadn't have done. What? I wish you hadn't have bothered. Your head is stuck in the past. What good is hope if it never prevails? Now leave, leave, and take that worthless book with you. Sorry you feel that way. I'm going to prove you wrong. says no one's visited in two years. I can hear something in your voice. That'll be words, love. Okay. I see you're in one of those moods. I'll talk to you later. No, wait, wait. You're right. So, uh, I've had an idea. Of course you have. Look, before you tell me, let me remind you that you just haven't managed to get any of these ideas off the ground. Perhaps just think on it before making any rash decisions. What ideas? Let's see. There was the time capsule. Ah yes, the cock in the jar. That wasn't a good idea. Then there was the eco-friendly lawnmower. Oh dear. Farmer Jones wasn't best pleased when I borrowed her sheep. String beans. Baked bean tins suspended by string from wall to wall. <laughs> a wonderful decoration. Until they collapsed and we ended up in A&E. <laughs> Sorry. Do you, you see where I'm going? No, this is a voice call, not a video call. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you later. No way, I'll behave, I promise. No chance. I do really believe I can make something here. This bookshop, it's a piece of history about to be lost to the world. I want to invest, I want to help the owner keep it alive. What do you think, love? Bookshop, man. If you said joke shop, then I think you have a shot. But why a bookshop? I don't know. You do. Look, 
If you can't tell me, who can you tell? Okay, it reminds me of one my grandpa used to take me to. The look, the smell. It's nostalgic, really. It'd be poetic to invest my inheritance in it. It'd make him proud. I see something here. Something hopeful. And something worth preserving. Love? I'm glad you could be honest with me. Look, there are a couple of things you need to think about. Firstly, you would have to move. We were talking to moving anyway. We were. My other condition is, you go and talk to the bank. Do that first, and then you'll have my blessing. If the owner will sell, of course. Oh, thank you, love. You won't regret it. I hope not. I'll go to the bank now and phone you afterwards. Love you. Okay. Love you. Bye. Jasper's Emporium of Remarkable and Underrated Books. How may I help you? Am I speaking to Mr. Jasper Oscar King? Yes, you are. Who am I speaking with, please? I am Dr. Underwood's secretary from Hill Top General Hospital. Hello. I'm ringing because we've received your recent blood test results and Dr. Underwood would like to see you urgently. Are you able to come in today? Today? Yes, it is really quite urgent. Would you excuse me just one moment, please? Of course. Hello again. May I just ask, is it treatable for cancer? I'm afraid I can't say, Mr King. You would need to discuss this with Dr Underwood. It's just I'm trying to think why you would want me in urgently. I suppose I should talk to the doctor. That is really the best thing. Can you make it to the hospital for 3pm? Yes, I should be able to manage that. Do you have someone who would accompany you? Some patients like to have a friend or family member with them, um, especially during difficult conversations. There's no one. I'll be fine. Thank you for asking that. OK, Mr King, we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I'm sorry if I upset you earlier. Oh, don't apologise, sir. I apologise. I shouldn't have shouted at you. I wondered if um, you would meet with me. Um, I'm on my way to an appointment um, just now. I understand. Sorry to have bothered you. Uh, I shouldn't like to inconvenience you. Um, I understand you commuted to, the, to visit the shop. If it's not too much trouble, however, I'd, uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say. I've got a spare room in my flat, and there's a, uh, the flat's above the shop, and if you'd like, you can stay the night. Uh, I'll cook, and we can dis discuss your offer. How did you know what I wanted to talk to you about? Well, your enthusiasm and perseverance. You have a keen intuition. Yeah. <laughs> And you have a very loud voice. I, uh... I overheard your conversation earlier um, while you were on the phone. Look, I've been absent for a couple of hours. I suggest you visit the, the quaint cafe uh, just over the road. Um, there you should be able to put together a business proposition. We'll see how you do. Oh, thank you, Jasper. Thank you. But... Don't thank me just yet. Go and prepare, and I'll see you later.
for offering to listen to me. You're welcome now. Here, let me put these away. I realise that I perhaps come across too strongly this morning. Here though, if you will, these are my plans. I took your advice and spent the afternoon in the cafe drawing up a solid business plan. May I be excused? The restroom? Uh, of course, uh, just down the hall. I have you know, but I'm sure of that. But let's take this bookshop malarkey nice and slow. Only then, only then will it have a chance to grow. Precisely. Now let's see. Books are like plants. Like plants? Just give me a chance. Explain. Keep it plain. I shall. They don't need water, this we know. But like plants, they do need a little TLC to help them grow. Grow? Now that's a load of nonsense. With love. Books can grow legs and walk off the shelf into someone's arms. Impossible. I'm being metaphorical. Of course you are. Now, so TLC check. Tickle their spines with a feather duster and give them some space and not too much sunlight. You've got it. I've got it. Okay, Sparty Pants, you tell me then. How are you going to get people in the door? Ah yes, that's your. Old is good and must be cherished, but new has appeal too. Tell me what you plan to do. Social meets and greets with new authors and book club Tuesday. Book club you say? Special discounts on the stock. Only for the book club lot? Yes! That's best. Writing club, once a week. A kind of writer's retreat. And when you get them through the door, you, you know they're going to love the store! Basics, though. Yes, how to make old books grow. There are artifacts, hidden gems, worlds, and people to get to know. Then they shouldn't be out of sight. One should feature each fortnight. Ah, a spotlight exhibit. I like that. But wait, there's more mullin beneath my hat. I find in life. When I get carried away, it's good to pause, to review the clause. Let's recap where I, where I went wrong before. You mentioned the internet was killing the store. Yes, and they say if you can't beat them, join them. 
Exactly. So, how are you going to do that, Sonny? What? What's so funny? No, nothing. Well, OK. It's the first time you've seen Lost for Words. Don't be absurd. Well? To sell books, both in store and on the net, we take your own suggestion. Then we might as well be giving the books away. We need a hook. Wait a moment, we'll only give a taster. That's the bait. Then they'll swim to the shop for more. Ah, bring them to the core. But that'll just bring a few. What then for the rest? That's the test. OK, let me think. We should stock out, but all of the store purchases must be rewarded. I propose a bookmark. Stamp for each transaction in the shop. Well, what happens when we reach the top? They'll receive invitations to read new writer's work. That really is a quirk. We won't know until we try, but Jasper, we'll try everything to revive this store. I promise I won't give in. Mal, you really should realise you're doing this on a whim. Don't say you're changing your mind. No, not at all. I just want you to remember this idea may not bind. I know you'll give it all you've got, but sometimes things just don't take. I promise you, Jasper, there are still people out there who need this store. It won't be a mistake. Come on then, what else have you got? Entertainment, perhaps? Engage them with a monthly event. Have to be an evening well spent. Well, show me what you've got. I'll give it a shot. Things in life, you just have to accept. 
some things that are too late to change. This bookshop might have a chance, but I've played my last card. I'm sorry, Jasper. Why? I've had a wonderful life. And I know you'll continue my legacy in the bookshop. You will, won't you? I will. Good. Because talking of wills, I want you to come with me for the solicitor. I'm leaving this shop and the flat to you. And when my time is up, I've no family, but I've always been good at judging characters. And I see something in you now. I always wanted a nephew, and I think you'll do. Yes, but thank you. I don't know what to say. It's a lot of pressure. Someone recently told me to have some hope. I say you should take their, their words. On one condition. What's that? You don't give up hope either. Okay, it's a deal. Jasper, as much as, as I appreciate your very generous gesture, I'm wondering if perhaps you should take some time to think on it? Now, for once in my life, I want to make this decision without the weight of thought. I want to live. I want to do something rash. Uh, Mr. King? Yes, that's me. And uh, this is the gentleman I mentioned on the phone, uh, Mr. Hobby. Mel is fine. No, he's with you. Please do take seats. Right. Now, I understand you want to change your will, Mr. King. Yes, that's correct. Um, I'd like Mr. Roddy to be the sole benefactor. I see. Previously, you stated you wanted your sister to be the benefactor. Yes. Um, unfortunately, she died last year. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Uh, may I ask how you know Mr. Roddy? He's a friend. May I ask how long you've known Mr. Roddy? A little over 24 hours. I see. Is that, is that a problem? Um, Mr. Oddy, could you excuse Mr. King and myself? Hopefully there's a waiting room to wait. Of course. You'll be fine. I'll, I'll see you shortly. Mr. King, the information you provided me with is somewhat alarming. I must check whether this is your own choice and you've not been forced to make this change. No, it was my idea. <clears throat> I've no living relatives. I want to invest in this young entrepreneur. Of course we'll put in safety clauses to ensure he just doesn't sell the shop and run off with all the money. But I'm confident he won't. Mr. King, forgive me, but I do have to ask. Are you in sound mind right now? Of course. That is, yes, I'm of sound mind. I know exactly what I want to do with my estate and my finances. Could I possibly persuade you to sleep on the decision? Look, with all due respect, I want to finalise this business today. I haven't got long left in this world, and I want to do one decent thing in my time remaining. Everyone deserves a chance. And I see something in Mel. One random act of kindness will change his life and allow my legacy to live on. Please, kindly help me to complete this change. Or I might very well consider taking my business elsewhere. Very well, Mr. King. It is, of course, your decision. I would invite Mr. Waddy back in. Thank you. Mr. Waddy? He says. Is um, this pen a freebie? There were quite a few in the waiting room. What? You'll make a nice keepsake, don't you think? Just put it away now. Actually, Mr. Waddy, you might as well keep it out. You and Mr. King have got some papers to sign. Shall we get started? Excellent. Yes, yes. that's right. Yeah. Did you get me one? I've got plenty of things. So, what do you think, Jasper? It's as good as new. Better even. I'm glad you, th I'm glad you think so. I have these pamphlets printed. A uh, newsletter of sorts.
Thank you, Al. Don't mention it. Here, take a seat. Do you need a drink? I'll go and get one. Hang on. better now it's not left empty. If that's what you want then, I'll make the arrangements. I meant to tell you, that book I gave you to have a look at. <coughs> well, which book Jasper? This is a palace of them right now. <coughs> it's nice to see you haven't lost your sense of humour. Uh, I'm quite right. It wouldn't do for us to be glum on this happy occasion. So, go on then. Which book? Oh, volumes. <coughs> <coughs> you read it? Yes, the In With The Hidden Window. Ah, a strange little <coughs> story, but inspiring, no? Very inspiring, and poetic, in fact. Go on. Well, <coughs> I suppose the inn is very much like the bookshop. And that would make me the innkeeper. And me the traveller. <coughs> Thank you, Mel. If you hadn't have taken a chance on me and the bookshop, then it would have been lost and forgotten forever. I'm full of gratitude. down. <coughs> Here, take the water. Oh my god, Jess, <coughs> your hands are freezing. You need some help. Just sit tight. I'll get you a blanket. <sighs> You're a good lad. Save your breath, Jasper. Please hang in there. Hello, I need an ambulance. Enjoy! <coughs> We've got a book club starting up. Be sure to scan the QR code. It's on the pamphlets. We're running the loyalty scheme. For each purchase in the store, you'll get a stamp on your bookmark. When it reaches the top, you'll get to beat a read and you write as work. 
once a month on a Friday we'll also be holding entertainment evenings. There is so much promise in this shop and we're delighted to be sharing it with you. Excuse me. Yes, may I help? This man who makes the was he a local author? Yes, he was. I highly recommend his novels. Here. He was a stalwart resident for years. He ran this bookshop tirelessly. I'm sad to say, he passed away last week. Jasper King. He fought to keep this bookshop running. And I'm determined to do the same. In fact, gather around everyone, listen up. I've got a story to tell. <clears throat> you know, the internet is marvellous. It really is. But you can't touch or smell the internet. Sure, you can search for things that you're looking for, but sometimes the best things in life are things that fall unexpectedly into your lap. I want to tell you a story. It's called The Inn with the Hidden Window. A long time ago, in a faraway land, there were three, uh, two hills three miles apart. Atop one hill was a castle, and atop the parallel hill was an inn. The inn was calm most of the time. It served travellers as a pit stop on the way to the castle. On this particular stormy night, a traveller retired to the inn. Community and wider community coming uh, to read 
uh, some winter uh, pieces of writing that they um, quite put in anthology. Um, all proceeds uh, always go to a charity or local cause, and we've um, chosen to raise money for Florence Park community centres uh, over 60s. Over 60s free Friday lunch club. Um, so thank you so much if you bought raffle tickets or made a donation. Um, we really appreciate that. Uh, we, as you know, we've got a raffle coming up. Uh, we've perfected a raffle to free prizes and won the home where we draw. So um, we'll be doing that in a second. And we're going to have the surprise is if you're still here, a uh, little Q and A, just five ten minutes in case there's anything you want to ask uh, the actors and um, maybe me. Uh, but um, if you want to, we'll have the house lights up, um, go and grab yourself a drink, we'll draw the raffle, quick Q&A, and then, um, yeah, we'll wish you a safe journey home. But, um, yeah, go and have a good time. May I be excused? The restroom? Uh, of course, uh, just down the hall. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's just giving me No one in the world could make it to the toilet. Unless <laughs> 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 they're Sonic. <laughs> Bye, Jiminy. Jasper's empire of um, respectable but slightly dodgy underground books. How are you? <laughs> and what are you supposed to be saying, right? <laughs> Jasper's emporium of remarkable and underrated books. Yay! <laughs> Jasper's empire of um, respectable but slightly uh, underground books. How may I help you? Jasper's Emporium of um, Respectable and Underground Books. How may I help you? Nice to see you again. Yes, that's me. And this is my associate. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> 